again, Peabody here. The youngster depositing milk in a cowboy hat is my boy Sherman. You're right, Mr. Peabody. It is a ten-gallon hat. I'm glad you're convinced. Put the hat in the refrigerator while I set the wayback controls. Where are we going today? Texas. To get another hat? No, to meet those stalwart right arms of frontier justice, the Texas Rangers. A twist of the dial to the year 1879 was enough to send us rocketing back through time and space until there we were inside the governor's mansion, which should have been in Texas, but was in those days somewhere near Springfield, Missouri. The governor was in conference with Captain R.J. Hotchkiss. How long have you been out on the road trying to sign recruits for your rangers, Captain? Six years. How many did you sign up? One. And that one was a girl, wasn't it? That's what they tell me. Well, I'm afraid the idea of forming a Texas Ranger outfit is a waste of time. No, it isn't, Governor. Well, it certainly is if we can't get anybody to join. You leave it to us. We'll form the Texas Rangers. The Governor not only gave us his blessing, but his seat on the Overland stage, which enabled us to get to the city of Laredo, which in those days was somewhere near Newark, New Jersey. Well, Sonny, as you can see, the streets of Laredo are full of cow folks who ain't got nothing to do. Now, how do you propose to get them to join us? Like this, Captain. To the Captain's amazement and my amusement, Sherman walked down the dusty street on his hands. Hey, kid, where'd you learn to do that? I got it from the Texas Rangers. And so it went until when he got back to us, he had 22 cowboys with him. Say, the kid here says if we become Texas Rangers, you'll show us how to walk on our hands. Is that so? Say it so, Captain. We'll teach you and you can teach them. Yep, it's so. Well, it seems Sherman had solved the problem with great alacrity, so we adjourned to the nearest cafe for lunch while Captain Hotchkiss prepared to induct the men. The lunch was good, but what we saw through the cafe window wasn't. Look, Mr. Peabody, it's a wagon full of hurt cowboys. Boys. That's a western ambulance, Sherman, and those hurt cowboys look familiar. Dashing outside, we fought to the vehicle. Those men are supposed to be Texas Rangers. What happened to them? Some dang fool named Hotchkiss went and pinned badges on him. What's wrong with that? He made him take their shirts off before he'd done it. Recruiting Rangers in Laredo was now out of the question, so we boarded the stage for San Antonio, which in those days was just south of Walla Walla, Washington. Well, I did just like you told me. I got me some glue so I could stick badges on rangers. You going to perform some more hand-walking, Sherman? No, this time I think I'll try something else. When it came to blowing bubblegum, Sherman was undoubtedly the second best in the world. I don't have to tell you who was first. At any rate, Sherman walked down the streets of San Antonio, blew bubbles in all assorted shapes and sizes, including a definite likeness of a certain moose, who shall remain nameless on this portion of the show. Likewise, I'm sure. And by the time he returned to Captain Hotchkiss, Sherman had collected ten Ranger prospects. Say, so this little fella here with a talented lip says that if we unjoin the Ranger outfit, you'll show us how to blow bubbles like him. Is that true? Tell him it's true, Captain. Yep, it's true. Hotchkiss was about to glue the badges on and swear the men in when a piece of paper fell from his hip pocket and caught Sherman's attention. What had the Dallas Kid and his nine rustlers? That's funny, Mr. Peabody. The Dallas Kid and his men look just like the new Rangers. I stopped the ceremony just in time. That's right, I'm the Dallas Kid. We uns was a gonna get the bubble gum and then revert back to our usual criminal nature. That blasted, I thought it was too good to be true. Mr. Dallas, are you a good shot? Am I a good shot? If anybody here can outshoot me, me and my boys will sign up to be Rangers. Well, that of course left it up to me. We adjourned to a target area and prepared to take our shots. It was then I thought of a brilliant idea. Uh, Dallas, I won't even have to shoot to outshoot you. I venture to say that you can't even hit the aforementioned target. Oh, yeah? Shucks, I could do that standing on one, too. That's a pretty big target, Mr. Peabody. And these are pretty big bullets I'm putting into this gun. Here, Dallas, try your luck. Dallas took the weapon, aimed, and fired. The bullet went straight for the target, but just before hitting it, made a 180-degree turn and returned to Dallas. You win, Peabody. Me and my boys are going lawful. How come he couldn't hit the target, Mr. Peabody? Quite elementary, Sherman. I took the precaution of writing the words Dallas Kid on the bullet. And you know what happens when a bullet's got your name on it. An hour later, Captain Hotchkiss and his rangers rode out of town. Did the Dallas Kid make a good ranger? Oh, one of the best, Sherman. But he became even more famous after he retired. You see, he built an amusement park and called it Wonderland. It became so famous, they even wrote a book about it. Really, Mr. Peabody? Well, of course, Sherman. Haven't you ever read Dallas in Wonderland? <laughs> Me, Mr. Whoopi. Yes? After Chumley left home, why did his mother knit him three socks? Why, he wrote he'd grown another foot. <laughs> <laughs>